doing something a little bit different at RRS today. Um, we're doing an R&D exercise for LRS, our Holden division. So here we have a classic Australian icon, HK Monaro. And we're going to show you the process of development of a three-link rear end for this model car. You can see somebody's already started to build a custom rear end for this HK. A watts linkage and a custom sway bar, narrowed axle housing, supposedly reinforced, not necessarily straight, and not correct in all its geometry. So let's go through the exercise of correcting all of this and making a bolt-in three-link. Now even before all these modifications were here, uh, Holdens and Fords had this leaf sprung set up. The problem with a leaf sprung rear end, as it compresses, it produces a characteristic called roll understeer. Now what that is, you'll notice at the back here, a shackle. Right? As that moves up, this moves back, has a stop on this Holden so it can't over uh, centre. And as you look where the bump rubber is, where it compresses the chassis is forward of it, right? So the actual diff moves forward as it compresses. One side going up, moving forward. One side on the other, moving rearward. So the axle housing skews in a corner. The more body roll, the more it skews, the more it steers out of the corner. As it straightens up, it releases and then goes into oversteer. Now there's only one worst type of suspension for doing that, and that's a triangulated rear end. The triangulated rear ends, because of the short upper arms and the angle of them, produce more roll of the diff, which in turn turns the diff. So leaf sprung rear ends and triangulated rear ends if you're a performance cornering person and not the go. There's a lot of other manufacturers that their design approach is the triangulated rear end. The shortcomings, one is roll understeer, the other is the upper arms that transfer the torque into the chassis, put it into the chassis in the wrong spot. Now, this is the reason why we design a three link. The torque comes down the torque arm and then changes where the torque is applied and the amount by the length of the arm. So in actual fact the torque that's coming out of here by the time it's at the front coming to the chassis is one-fifth. That's exactly the amount that we've calculated. So it's one-fifth of the torque back into the chassis. If it's through little arms that are triangulated it's all going into a spot here. The chassis aren't designed to do that. Not these original monocoque chassis. So we've got that aspect. The next one is the control of roll centre, which is not the same as centre of gravity, it's the point around which the centre of gravity rolls. So when you're looking at that, you need to get the balance right. Again, a triangulated rear end typically uses a panard bar. There's not a lot of adjustment with a panard bar to get the roll centre in the right spot. The whole idea of this is to get as much neutral handling of the car or the type of handling you like so that we get a balance between front steer and the way the car's cornering with weight transference. Right? So you, you want the weight to be ideally in the middle of the car. Well obviously that isn't the case. But there's geometric ways of producing that and changing the driving characteristic of what these used to drive like, which is ploughing understeer and then as you exit the turn, dangerous oversteer. This whole setup transfers its forces into the chassis via these points. When you design a, a rear end correctly, what should happen is that the forces are decreased, the chassis acts like it's a stiffer one and all of the components that you bolt in rather than it being a detriment become an advantage. It requires a little bit more of a design understanding of how monocoque chassis work. So we're about to pull all this out now, uh, fit the new LRS 3 link and show you how much better it is.
here we are with the completed HK to HG uh, Holden three link assembly. And as you can see, we've finished all the Watts link mount. This all bolts in place of the tank, no holes to drill there. Unless you want to put heavier bolts in and you just drill the holes out slightly bigger. Uh, then of course we've got the upper shock mount frame that bolts straight in place of the original shock absorber mounts. That's as simple as it gets. Next thing is the LRS front cross member. As you can see, it's tied into the floor mounting position of the original seats on the outer side, on the inside, with fixed tubes in the center. We drill the holes to a bigger 7 16 in the middle and 3 8 on the outer. That way you've got all the rigidity added back into the car and a secure mounting place for the torque arm. With that attaches our torque arm to the LRS 9 inch. We've got our coilovers with uh, two inches up, two inches down adjustment on its base adjustment, and then of course the coilover. We've got all of the coilover settings, one to four for street, four to eight for track and sporty type handling, and then the next lot for drag racing to balance the torque. So we can adjust the roll center so that we can get a nice neutral handling car. We can adjust the watts linkage to allow for frame error. We've got fixed arms so that you just bolt them in the original location with no cutting and welding. And of course, there's no adjustment on these arms. There's specific reasons for that. One of the problems with adjustable arms for a street car is the nuts all come loose. Anybody who's got some of these uh, triangulated forelinks knows all about that. We don't want anything falling out of the car. It's got fully serviceable joints, bearings, in all of the major locations, so everything is serviceable. The shocks are rebuildable. Added to all of this is the major handling benefits. The first thing over the leaf springs is it eliminates roll under steer. An original leaf spring, when it compresses, moves the axle housing forward. So if one side is compressed and the other side is relaxed, the axle housing skews in the car. This turns the car out of the corner. The more you turn it into a corner, the more the rear end is turning out. When you straighten up, it releases and oversteers. So that eliminates all of that. This is one of the problems with some of these uh, triangulated rear ends. They actually have more roll under steer than uh, the standard leaf springs. And th this type of uh, suspension configuration has zero roll under steer. Added to that, our torque circuit, instead of coming through the leaf spring, into the chassis, back to the engine mounts, now transfers through the torque arm into the front cross member, shorter distance to the engine mounts. So this makes all of this back half of the chassis just a push motion rather than a twisting motion. So let's show you what we've done with the tank because that, now we've got a mystery here of where did the tank go. And here we have the LRS fuel tank conversion. Great options available with this in-tank pump with a built-in swirl pipe. You can use this with a supercharged injected motor. Um, we've got standard fuel inlet, so it can hook up to the original filler neck position. Uh, standard type uh, fuel sender or pickup if you choose. Also, this is a better capacity tank and fully serviceable and rebuildable pump. All of this, you can just bolt in simply by drilling and tapping some quarter UNC bolts into the frame. That's it. If you choose otherwise, you could possibly weld it in. The tank is removable and fully available in uh, different finishes, depending on what you want to do. So there we are. Just got one last thing to show you. Introducing Chris. G'day. He's your local LRS consultant. He can take care of all of your technical needs for modifying your GM.